Hello, my name is Julie Hall and I want to welcome you to block 14 of the Rock the Casbah collection. This time we're going to work on this beautiful block um, which encompasses six, I'm not sure whether to call them flames or elements, as well as some um, corner embroidery and it's all highlighted with this beautiful and I'm just trying to get the best look at that there flame of love quilting design remember as always you get the flame of love quilting design as an individual block itself and you also get it as a continuous quilting block meaning that you can have the ultimate fun and flexibility with this collection okay let's get started so to begin with you will see here I have my cutaway stabilizer and I've got my embroiderer's felt laid on top of it with the thread threaded with wash away thread I'm going to come through and stitch colorway one which is going to hold down that embroiderer's felt from here what I'm going to do is trim away the excess and the reason that we want to trim away the excess here is simply because we don't want the bulk of this inside our project um, as we're putting the seams together so a little bit of extra preparation work now is going to make a much better project at the end You'll see here that I'm using um, a fairly large pair of, um, of scissors and that's because the waddings are thicker than applique fabric. Once I start with applique fabric, you'll see I use my regular um, squeeze scissors. I'm now laying my 100% cotton fabric, which has been starched, and I've still got the wash away thread on here. The reason that we're using wash away thread is because if we don't, we are going to end up with multiple outlines around the project showing when the project is complete. And it's once again a little bit of effort now is going to pay off in the long term. And now we can start our embroidery. Now I had a small issue here with my video that things went a little bit cattywampus. So I am now already up to colorway 9 and all I'm doing is an outline that shows where to place the applique fabric as you can see here I place the applique fabric down and it stitches the next color to hold it down and I trim away now this is that time that you're going to want to be using beautiful sharp squeezy style scissors we do sell these in some fabulous fashion colors on our website check them out um, and um, just to get into all of these extra little pieces. So that was colorway 14 that we're stitching now and I'm going to come in and trim away the excess. So we're already more than halfway through the block. God, how well are we doing? And I'm now going to come through and we're up to colorway number 15 which is going to do a stitch in the block for some extra texture and then it's going to do the applique stitching around as it's doing now now the applique stitch that we do on these blocks is a luscious thick stitch to really cover things up if you are having problems with the applique not uh, with the stitching not covering the fabrics correctly two things could have happened the first is that um, you may have left too much fabric along the outside and you may need to trim a little closer. The second thing would be that your tension is a little bit too tight. Generally it's the bobbin tension and that will need to be adjusted to get a really sexy satin stitch. So just have a look at how much bobbin thread is showing on the back of that satin and it really should be about a third. 
one of the nice things about the satin stitching um, that I do on all of my applique projects is that it has a finishing stitch running around the applique and it really just creates the most beautiful edge to the design. Now you will notice that I am going rather quickly here. Don't think that I'm stitching too, too speedily. It is really just that um, this block took about an hour to complete and if you had to sit and watch that entire hour it could be incredibly boring. So I've sped up the stitching. Um, generally I'm stitching on about 500 to 600 stitches a minute and I am using an 1175 needle. Excuse the thread breaks there. Okay, so the gorgeous stitches are just finishing off on this and I'm liking the circular sort of a look that this block has. I really see it as flames, these elements, which is why I chose the quilting design to go with it as being the flames of love. The decorative stitching inside the block just to texturize how um, curvy everything else is within the block I've actually gone for a diamond pattern and it's the little elements that I like giving something different. Now one of the interesting things that I think you can see on this block if we come around you can see here how the um, the fabric of the block itself is actually pulling a little bit on the sides there and that in itself is the reason that we use the wash away thread to tack down and again when we're tacking down our wadding and our um, backing fabric and that is because as you add as you add any sort of stitching to fabric it is going to suck it in and what we need to do is leave enough um, detail um, or leave enough fabric on the side of the block and make room for that sucking in to happen and you'll see how we do that at the end Okay, so we're at the end now of um, that colorway 15 and I'm now going to change over to my purple or wine colored thread and I want to app do, add an applique circle to the middle of the block here. And, oh, you gotta love an auto threader, don't you? And so we're gonna stitch the circle, which is colorway 16. Colorway 17 is going to be where we are holding that fabric down. Then of course we're going to trim away the excess. Now I am a huge fan of moving the hoop forwards and backwards. It is one of the brilliant features on my Janome 15,000. Um, I know all of the Janomes that are the 10,000 and one, the 10,000 plus have that feature, as do the Fafs and Husqvarna's. I'm not sure about the other brands. Um, I know that the brother doesn't have that feature currently. But what it allows you to do is just move the hoop forward and that way you don't have to remove the hoop from the machine. Colorway 18 is coming through and doing the gorgeous little satin stitch around that block. Um, so I'm now going to change to um, my light teal thread and colorway 19 is going to do a checkerboard or a curved checkerboard stitching in the corner of each block. 
and what you might notice here is that checkerboard is actually starting a couple of millimeters past where we did the initial outline because of that fabric sucking in don't stress because we've used wash away thread it is not an issue I love this little satin checkerboard sort of a stitch it's just such a pretty one and turning it onto a curve just take something that is square and makes it curvy and here is our last corner I'm then going to come through and thread my dark teal um, thread and stitch colorway 20 which is going to stitch and of course now I've got to change my bobbin Murphy's Law um, and it's going to stitch and for lack of a better term I'm going to call them little orange peel segments in the corner there once again don't think I'm stitching this fast in real life this took much more time and this is the final color of the actual stitching in the block so one of the things that I love about these blocks is that from the back they look like traditional quilt blocks so you don't see any of the satin stitching on the back all you see is the quilting at this point it's also a great time to make sure that your backing fabric and your wadding is ready make sure that it's been pressed with a warm iron um, particularly when it comes to the backing fabric with your wadding you need to press it depending on um, what your wadding has been um, constructed of so you don't want to melt it is what I'm saying okay so final set of stitches here and then we are coming over and we are going to re-thread our wash away thread and what we then want to do is remove the hoop from the machine and turn it over excuse all the pics of my hand I realize that's not what you want to see okay so I move the hoop forward just to make it easier to grab that I want to flip it over and I want to lay down my wadding fabric now I find I don't need to use tape or anything to attach it I'm just laying it over and then I'm going to stitch colorway 21 which is going to hold that fabric down and you'll see here what I'm doing next is I'm trimming away all the excess because again I do not want it in my seams once I've done that I take my backing fabric and I lay it over the back of that outline flip the hoop over and return it to the machine and with the wash away thread still on I'm going to stitch colorway number 22 which is going to hold that thread oh, sorry which is going to hold that fabric onto the hoop now I don't bother putting wash away thread in the bobbin because there'll be nothing holding the bobbin thread there it is going to come away and now when it comes to quilting your design you have lots of options totally up to you um, I prefer to quilt in embroidery thread just because it keeps that satiny sort of a look to it and I just use regular bobbin fill on the back you can quilt in whatever you want um, I choose my color to match the fabric so that it's unobtrusive these are all choices that you get to make yourself and so I'm threading up my white polyester embroidery thread which I'm going to use for quilting 
and I'm going to come through and quilt the block. Now this is a custom quilting design which means it goes around the project that we are quilting. What it does is it really then pops the embroidery up adding an extra element of depth. If you don't want to use quilting in yours, just say you want to just do the blocks, then stop this block after colorway 20, and then you can just piece them together however you would like. Remember that you also get the quilting design as a full block that you can use for any quilting project that you might do. And I just love, I do wish I'd just pulled that down a little bit there. I just can't reach that at the moment. But the quilting is coming through and just looking stunning. And we are almost ready to come and take a look at the finished product. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look at how it turned out. So here is our finished block and I'm loving that you can actually see the detail here. Um, I think the colors look stunning. If you are using one of the smaller sizes and you still want to do a larger quilt, um, do two of each block and just reverse some of the colors around and it will give you a totally different look. Thank you for joining us today for block 14 of the Rock the Casbah quilt. I look forward to seeing you for our next block. Bye.